Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. My tech guru, Nathan, sent me a note. So Steve, check out the story from Gizmodo, written by Thomas Germain. And it says, Apple's being sued for allegedly deceiving users with privacy settings after a Gizmodo story. So this is one of those things, if you write stuff on the internet or you put up videos, you do anything like that, when something happens as a result of your story or shortly thereafter, which you may have inspired, you kind of look at it and go, I wonder if we helped on that. But uh, Gizmodo ran a story saying something was happening and somebody has now filed a lawsuit alleging that that thing has happened. (laughs) So researchers found that Apple collects iPhone data even when the company's own iPhone analytics settings explicitly promises not to. So Apple's facing a class action lawsuit for allegedly harvesting iPhone user data, even when the company's own privacy settings promise that they're not doing that. That lawsuit was filed recently in California federal court, and it comes right after Gizmodo exclusively reported on research into how multiple iPhone apps send Apple Analytics data, regardless of whether the iPhone Analytics privacy setting is turned on or off. Now, I do not use an iPhone. I've got an Android, but I understand they've got their own problems too. The problem was spotted by two independent researchers at the software company MISC, who found that the Apple App Store sends the company exhaustive information about nearly everything a user does in the app, despite a privacy setting, iPhone Analytics, which claims to disable the sharing of device analytics altogether when switched off. Gizmodo asked the researchers to run additional tests on other iPhone apps, including Apple Music, Apple TV, books, and stocks. The researchers found that the problem persists across most of Apple's suite of built-in iPhone apps. The lawsuit accuses Apple of violating the California Invasion of Privacy Act. Privacy is one of the main issues that Apple used to set its products apart from competitors, the plaintiff said in the lawsuit which can be read online, but Apple's privacy guarantees are completely illusory. The company has plastered billboards across the country with the slogan, Privacy, that's iPhone. Apple did not immediately respond to a request for comment. As seen in a video posted to the MISC YouTube channel, and MISC is M-Y-S-K, uh, the App Store appears to harvest information about your activity in real time, including what you tap on, which apps you search for, what ads you see, how you found a given app, and how long you looked at the app's page. And, you know, there was a time when this would have seemed so absurd as an allegation because you go, who could possibly handle all that data? And then you discover that, oh, they've got ways of handling it, storing it, and researching it, and sifting through it. And now storage is not that big of a problem. So Apple's privacy settings make explicit promises about shutting off that kind of tracking. But in the tests... Turning the iPhone analytics setting off had no evident effect on the data collection, nor did any of the iPhone's other built-in settings meant to protect your privacy from Apple's data collection. And it makes you wonder if they knew about this uh, and just figured, ah, it's just easier just to say we're doing it, but we're not doing it. Or if somehow they didn't know about this and there's some kind of weird glitch in the system uh, MISC's tests on the App Store found that Apple receives that data along with details that can identify you and your device, including ID numbers, what kind of phone you're using, your screen resolution, <laughs> your keyboard languages, and how you've connected to the internet. The kind of information commonly used for device fingerprinting. When the researchers looked at other iPhone apps at Gizmodo's request, they found that many behave similarly. While the health and wallet apps did not collect analytics data, Apple Music, Apple TV, Books, the iTunes Store, and Stocks all did. The Stocks app shared data, including your list of watched stocks, the names of stocks you viewed or searched for, and timestamps for when you did it, as well as a record of any news articles you saw in the app. And that's kind of scary. The idea that you're thinking, hey, I might buy some stock. I'm thinking about buying or selling some stock. So you go into a stock app and you're poking around and somebody is theoretically watching what you're doing while you're researching stocks you may or may not buy. So the level of detail is shocking for a company like Apple. Uh, Tommy Misk previously told Gizmodo, in case you're wondering where the name Misk came from, it's the man's last name, M-Y-S-K. This data can be sensitive, especially when you consider that merely searching for apps related to topics such as religion, gender issues, 
health, and addiction can reveal details about a person's life. Through its pervasive and unlawful data tracking collection business, Apple knows even the most intimate, potentially embarrassing aspects of the user's app usage, regardless of whether the user accepts Apple's illusory offer to keep such activities private. And I was joking not so long ago about that dumb scam where they send you an email and they go, I've sent you an email from your own email address. So obviously I've hacked all your devices and I, I planted some Trojan malware on your device a while back and I know everything that you do, everything. I'm going to reveal it to all your friends and family because I got that too. And, and you know, you have to send me some Bitcoin, but there's a hacker code and if you pay me the Bitcoin, I won't do it. And it's a scam, obviously. But the funny part is that <laughs> the information that they're accusing Apple of gathering here uh, sounds a lot like <laughs> that scam. But this is, of course, allegedly a real big company doing it. And it's, it's a scary concept. But I can tell you also, I was talking to somebody just the other day. Just the other day. And... Um, Somebody, and I know who it was, but somebody was working on something at my house and they backed over a little tree. It was about this tall, a little cedar tree. I don't know, what is that, about four and a half feet tall maybe? I could stand up and figure it out, but I'm a busy man. So guy in a truck ran over a tree and hey, accidents happen. You know, you got to break some eggs, as they say. So I, 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 had this, I had to say a few words and chop the tree down. Tree's gone now. And I mentioned, I said, well, you know something, it wasn't that big of a tree. Uh, I've had worse things happen. Uh, so I'll probably just plant another one. And about an hour later, I sat down, was watching some television. And I'm scrolling through Facebook. And every ad I see is from companies offering to sell me trees. You can buy trees. Did you know that we can send you a tree? You want a tree about this tall in Michigan? We can get you one of those. And ship it to you. It came because I was speaking about trees near my phone. I know that. I know that's what that was. And I remember years ago, I did, <laughs> I did a video on this. And I'd mentioned that I had bemoaned the fact to a friend of mine that Cold Stone Creamery, there had been one near where I lived, and it went out of business. They were no longer there. But Cold Stone Creamery is still around. They simply closed that one branch. I don't know their franchises or what they are, but that, that one left. And, and I know why. <laughs> I liked it, but I didn't like it that much to the point where I was going there like every day. I'd go there once a month or something, you know, and apparently that wasn't enough to keep them in business. And so the strange thing was at the event where I was talking to somebody about that, I got bored and I'm flipping through Facebook, up starts popping ads for Cold Stone Creamery. And I, I did a video. This is three or four years ago now. And I mentioned that. And I had a whole bunch of people go, Steve, that's just a coincidence. That is not because your phone is listening to you. <laughs> and I mentioned that in a follow-up video. And I got contacted by a whole bunch of people. And I suspect Nathan may have been one of them. Saying, no, no, you're absolutely right. Your phone's listening. And it, whenever it picks up keywords like that, uh, it runs it through something. And, and if there's advertisers who are looking for people thinking about Cold Stone Creamery, they'll show them an ad and let, let you know where the nearby store is because there actually was another store in the other direction. I knew it was there too, but it's further away and I don't go there. But that kind of stuff happens. So you can imagine the value to an advertiser who says, look, I want to sell trees. I want to sell, you know, I'm a nursery. So I want to sell little trees. I want to sell little trees to people and I want to sell them to people who actually want to buy them. But, you know, what are the odds that right now on Facebook, how many people scrolling through Facebook right now are actually looking to buy little trees? How, how many could there be? But if Facebook can say, but we can hit people who want to buy little trees. There might not be that many of them, but we can hit them. And that's the interesting thing. I worked in radio for years. And in radio, I, I knew people in sales. I never did radio sales, but I know people who worked in radio sales departments. So I'm very familiar with how that works. And they would say things like, between 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock, Monday through Friday, we've got this many listeners in this demographic. Men this age, women this age. We've got so many of them are going to hear at least a part of the show between 6 and 10 a.m., the morning show. 
So if you want to hit women between the ages of 18 and 34, and you run ads between 6 and 10 a.m. on our morning show for a full week, it's a very good chance that those women in that group will hear at least one of your ads. Think about that shotgun approach right there. You've got to run ads for an entire week, and you're, and you're hoping to hit people in a demographic, but you don't know if you did. And by the way, you don't know what those people want to buy. You know, and so, I mean, I've worked at radio stations where the demographic was of such a sort that they might go to bars, for instance, or nightclubs. And so you get a lot of bar and nightclub advertising in the afternoon show and the evening show. And the thinking is that people are listening at that time of the day and that demographic might be the kind of people who go to a bar. What are the odds? And you're literally playing the odds. And so when somebody comes along and goes, no, 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 we've got the data so that we can actually put your ad in front of somebody who is actively seeking to buy trees because they may have mentioned it, they may have Googled for it, they may have, they may have done something else, they, they, they may have posted a comment going, hey, Somebody's ran over my tree. I'm looking to buy a tree. I did not do that. Because obviously if I'd done that, I'd think, okay, I know that that's what happened. No, I simply said it out loud. I said it out loud. So that to me is scary, but that's, again, I'm not using an iPhone. I'm using an Android. And I, I think at this point, we've almost all given up on the fact that we have any form of privacy whatsoever. But it's an interesting concept that Apple is marketing how secure and private their phones are, and how they safeguard your privacy. Oh, by the way, eh, not so much. <laughs> but I got to congratulate the people over at Gizmodo, Thomas Germain in particular, because it appears that they did a story, and it shook things up to the point where somebody's now filed a lawsuit against Apple. And so during the lawsuit pendency, they will be able to litigate some of this and probably get some better answers on what's going on. It's just whether or not it gets settled quietly or publicly. And if we ever find out what these guys discover in the litigation. So Thomas Germain wrote this for Gizmodo. Nathan, my good friend who helps out technical problems, sent me the story. Apple sued for allegedly deceiving users with privacy settings after Gizmodo story. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. If I had to live my life again, I'd make the same mistakes, only sooner.